Hello, my name's Henry, and I'm a vacuum cleaner. I'm gonna be unboxed on YouTube. Look at me, I'm all red, but that's not with embarrassment. That's the colour that Pneumatic made me. Although I do come in other colours as well. I come in blue, yellow, green. I think that's it, and red. But I'm the red version, the most popular version of Henry. Do you want to see what's inside my box? Okay then, let's have a look. Well, thank you Henry for that introduction. You sounded a bit muffled in your box, and unfortunately I sound a bit muffled as well. Because I have a heavy cold or man flu, call it what you will. But, even though I'm at death's door, Unboxing of vacuum cleaners doesn't stop on my channel. Don't worry. I'd have to be in a coma not to unbox a vacuum. In fact, just a tip for anyone watching, if I am ever in a coma, just play a few vacuum cleaner videos or start up some vacuum cleaners in the hospital room and I'll probably just come out of the coma straight away and start demonstrating the vacuum. But anyway, I'm not in a coma, fortunately. Where is this going? I don't know. Here we are. Here's a Henry. It's HVR200. This is one of the later models to be produced with the EU regulations in mind. I'm not sure on the wattage of this yet. I think it's 620. I don't know. I will soon find out though. We'll all find out. This is the standard toolkit. This is basically your bog standard Henry. The best selling Henry. It's not the Henry Extra, it's not Henry Micro, it's just the standard Henry, which I think probably sells more for the pneumatic company than any of the other models. So we get your standard hose, the carpet and floor nozzle, a little clip which secures the nozzle to the machine, little parking bracket, dusting brush, that's a little adapter tool, I'll show you what that's for later, crevice tool, uh, all-purpose nozzle with a detachable brush, a chrome handle, two chrome extension tubes and as I said it's a HVR212 model and there's not a lot else I can show you on the back of the box we've just got a relatively new feature for Henry the parking bracket being shown there, this is a new floor tool made with the new EU regulations in mind, they've changed the floor tool to uh, I think they claim increases pick up on the old Henry despite the fact the wattage of the motor is nearly half of what the old Henry was and then we're just showing a few tools in use Henry's rewind system there is also shown okay then let's open the box and see what's inside right then I don't think I need any scissors for this part just a question of putting my hand in and releasing the flaps I was just thinking earlier that I've never actually unboxed a regular Henry or demonstrated a regular Henry on my channel I have done of course Henry's sister or wife or a bit on the side I'm not sure Hetty I've done her and I also have done George which I'm going to call Henry's brother I think that's all I've done, George and Hetty, and now we've got Henry into the mix. Although I have owned other pneumatic machines, I've had a Henry Extra, I've had a Henry Hound, I've had a James, um, I haven't had a Charles. But I got all those machines long before I was uploading to YouTube. Here is the instruction manual for the Henry and Hetty, and I'm not sure if this has autosave, we've got the flower which used to symbolise the autosave. Ah uh, no, it's got... well I'll have to check on the thing. I believe the first variant of this model that came out um, when the EU regulations were introduced just had a single speed, just a single on-off switch and a mains on light. This one appears to have a high-low speed setting but not an autosave function so when you switch the machine on, I'm assuming that whatever setting you've got it on here, low or high, that's the power that will start up. Typical pneumatic instructions, mainly text there, 
nice full colour so anyone should be able to understand. It's showing putting the face on but normally the faces are already supplied clicked onto the machine. There are a few other bits and pieces at the back which look a bit technical. Most people won't look beyond the pictures I expect. It's such a simple machine that I don't think you'll have much trouble working out what to do. Now here we go, here's the new floor nozzle. Now it looks, it does look an improvement on the standard nozzle that used to be supplied. The one thing I'm not keen on is the fact that it has a plastic sole plate. Now I believe the models you could have buy exclusively at John Lewis, the John and Lewis model. Now I did mean to buy one of those machines, either a John or a Lewis, but I missed the boat on that one. They don't seem to be available anymore, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. So basically, this is very similar to the nozzle you got with John or Lewis, but as I said, those did come with a metal base plate. So it's a pretty standard looking nozzle. You've got thread pickers either side of the suction inlet, side suction, more or less side suction channels. They're actually not open at the sides. This is probably to keep the suction in and you've got your foot operated pedal which lowers a brush that more or less goes around the full circumference of the nozzle with just a little gap either side where the suction channel is but like all pneumatic products it seems a very well made nozzle it looks to me to be like a German design I've seen this design before on German made machines whether it is made in Germany or it's just a, a copy of a German design, I'm not sure. You've got a nice roller at the back to help with movement across your carpet. And of course, because this is a newer Henry, you've got the little parking bracket here, which enables us to park that nozzle onto Henry's body. Inside here we have the three small cleaning tools. Again, this is pretty standard, these soot cleaning tools you get. No, I didn't cut, I didn't cut far enough. Right, so here I have quite a, a nice soft dusting brush. Fairly soft, I wouldn't personally use that on anything too delicate like a TV screen, but on a Venetian blind, on your shelving, tops of your skirting boards, I think that'll be fine. So that's your brush for dusting. This little adapter enables you to connect any of the small cleaning tools directly to the hose end, which is useful if you're cleaning in a confined space like the inside of your car. A decent length crevice tool. I've seen longer, I've seen a lot shorter. It's not quite 30 centimetres that, but it's, it's a reasonable length of tool to get down the side of your chairs, in between your car seats, behind your radiators. It won't go quite behind your radiators, but it's for all those nooks and crannies. Here we have a brush attachment oh. and your all-purpose nozzle, a little bit of plastic stuck on there. It does seem different, this plastic. I don't know what, there's something changed about it. They still feel like they're strong. I think you'd uh, have trouble breaking one of these nozzles. And of course you've got, you can use it like that or you can slide this brush on. The brush isn't as soft as a dusting brush so it's not for delicate surfaces. You can use that on your stairs to provide extra agitation to bring the pile up a bit. But I've never really used my pneumatics with that brush on. I've tended to use the nozzle without the brush. But it's up to you what's, what you find best in your home. Here's the hose. It's normally a nice length of hose you get on the Henry cleaners. 
So that's the end you attach the handle to, or as I said, you can attach all the small cleaning tools directly to this end, or you can just use this, because it's shaped in that way, you can just whip off the handle and just use that if you need to, to whip something in, you know, in a corner that you can't quite reach. But if you want to connect the small tools directly to the hose, you need that little adapter, that's what that adapter's for. Because if you try and fit the tools directly without the adapter, you can't do it. And here is the other end. Now I think, yes it is, definitely. Not sure if you can see on, on how well that shows up. But this is a tapered hose, so it is wider at this end, at the cleaner end, than it is at the handle end. Now there's all sorts of reasons I've read for this. SIBO do it. Um, I've got SIBO D4 Premium that has a much wider hose end at the machine end. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> this happens a lot, doesn't it? You see, I, I often upload these videos on my day off and it tends to be the day I have things delivered. I should have waited, I, I know. I had this delivered earlier and I was expecting a few other bits and pieces. Not vacuum related, but Anyway, sorry about that little interruption. Now, whoops, so there we go. Now, so it is wider at this end than it is at this end. So basically I believe it does, it's supposed to improve the airflow. So it's another thing that Henry or Pneumatic have done to increase the performance of Henry despite having to reduce the motor wattage. Although, uh, original Henry's, I mean the last Hetty Ion Box, which is basically a Henry in pink, I believe was a 1200 watt motor. Now that still would have been okay, that still was under the EU limits. It won't be in 2017, it'll go down to 900. So obviously Pneumatic have been forward thinking, because this machine's, I think it'll be a 620 watt model. Because it's under 900, this, this is compliant with the 2017 regulations. So anyway, so what this does, it uh, apparently increases airflow because it's wider at this end and I believe it helps prevent blockages. I'm not sure. I've never had a Henry block. So it is slightly different to the Hetty I unboxed. Unlike the Hetty though, because I didn't get this from Argos, the Hetty I bought from Argos came with an extension hose that fitted on the end of this which enabled me to clean right to the top of the stairs. This, unfortunately, doesn't have that feature. Now, here is the first chrome. I believe they're chrome. I'm not sure. They could be stainless steel. But this is the handle. Very familiar. They haven't really changed this. It's got the same. It's very, very stiff, actually. But I don't think many people would open that. That's your suction relief control. You do really need to do that can't sort of, it's very hard to move like that so you really need to get your whole hand on and go like that whether or not you'd use that, I personally with any vacuum I very seldom used the air relief valve unless the machine doesn't have electronic control, of course we've got two speeds on this model so I can't see you needing to use that but anyway it is rather stiff and then, finally, before we get Henry out, we've got the two... Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Another little interruption. I could feel it coming on and I thought, let's hope I get this bit finished before, but... I've just had a terrible coughing fit. But don't worry, folks. By the time I upload the full demo of this, I should be in full health. I won't sound like I'm smoking 50 a day. And I won't have to be breaking off to cough. Anyway, here we go. <clears throat> Two extension tubes. Now, it is a shame that pneumatic don't, I mean, I've said it before, I would love to see, especially on a domestic pneumatic cleaner, maybe not so important in a commercial setting, why do not pneumatic provide, or at least give you the option, of a telescopic tube. To have these two tubes means you're a bit limited to the height you can you you know you can't adjust this once you've got these connected you can't adjust them up and down I would also like to see sort of a 
a push button click fitting, similar to you get on Miele, Sebo, Dyson cleaners, where it's not a friction fit. Because some people have either complained that they, because they haven't pushed the tubes on enough, they've either complained that the nozzles have dropped off, or when they come to remove a nozzle, it's that stiff, it's really hard to remove. So come on pneumatic, you've made a few little improvements, but I think it's the tools, in my opinion, that need looking at. There's not much you can do with the cleaner itself, but, you know. Anyway, that is just a little niggle that I have, and I've, I've seen other people have had that niggle as well. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's something else apart from Henry. There's some spare bags, which a lot of manufacturers don't give you any spare bags these days. You used to at least get one spare bag in most vacuums that I've, I've bought over the years. You'd have one bag fitted and one spare, but now even some top models don't give you a spare bag, which is a bit stingy. I don't think you get them even with Miele now. You used to get one spare bag. But pneumatic, I assume there's a bag fitted, I'm not sure until we open it, but you get three spares, I believe. And these bags are absolutely dirt cheap. There's no excuse not to use genuine pneumatic bags. I've seen these for as little as five pounds for 10 bags. I mean, look how big they are. They're absolutely huge. Pepper flow bags. So these are an improvement on the paper bags. I have seen paper bags. You can still buy paper bags from alternative manufacturers that cost more than these. You don't want to be buying imitation bags, especially when they're so, so cheap and far superior. Because pneumatic have moved away from paper, it makes the bags so much stronger, so there's less likelihood of the bags splitting if you pick up any hard or sharp objects, or you leave it to get really full and it splits. This shouldn't split. Right, so it's time now to reveal Henry. There's nothing else. Hello Henry, you're out of the box. This is your new home now. Let's pop you down there. <clears throat> Let's have a look. Let's have a look at little Henry. That looks a bit different. There's something different going on in the area where you connect the hose, or you could say that's his nose. It's meant to look like his nose, I think, when you have the hose on. The face is attached to the machine, as, as you can see it's the later, it's just like a 3D face, the earlier models just had stickers. This face actually does stick out and can be removed if you wish. Here we've got the energy label. I was surprised actually not to see this on the box. So if you're in a shop you can't really tell if you just got the box to look at, you can't really see the energy ratings. Whether is this is because I bought this online, and obviously from an online retailer, you don't get to see the box. These details were actually illustrated on the website. So it's becoming fairly familiar now, these energy labels. So like most of the vacuum cleaners you can now buy in Europe. It has an A rating. There are some that have a lower rating. For me, the, the actual energy consumption is, is the least important because you're not going to save much money even if you get one that's rated G, um, E, F, G. It's not going to save you a huge amount of money. Vacuum cleaners, although you know the wattage had been going up rather a lot, they did need to curb the wattage. But Henry's have always been pretty economical anyway. So, for me, I wouldn't get too worked up about if it has a B or C or an even a D. You know, what your main concern is how clean is it going to leave your home. So for this model, this gets a C for carpet cleaning performance. Now this is dust pickup on carpet. It doesn't take into effect um, pet hair pickup. It's just dust they put down. So, you know, it doesn't tell you how good it is on pet hair. Sorry, that's it. I'm pointing at the C, but that's the emissions, that's what it's going to blow out into the room, the air that comes out of the machine, it's a C, so it's sort of an average. If you've got allergies, you're very sensitive to dust, you may want to look at cleaner with an A rating for that, for there. 
Now it is C for carpet cleaning, a C for hard floor cleaning, so that's average. 72 decibels, that's pretty quiet, that's one good thing about Henry's, they're nice and quiet. And they claim it uses 25.2 kilowatts per hour per annum on average use, whatever that happens to be. High flow range, low energy system it says on there. So there's that. Here is Henri himself with the later edition of the parking bracket on the back and provision to store one of the small cleaning tools on this clip here so you only have the choice of one I'm afraid so whichever one tool you find you're grabbing most you can pop it on that clip there I think that's the one I would probably use most but if you find you're using the dusting tool more than the furniture nozzle then by all means put the dusting tool on and then you all, it's always there to grab and attach to the end of the hose should you wish so like I say this is the parking bracket let me just get the nozzle into there so that's where the nozzle sits so if you have to pause your vacuuming you don't have to throw you don't have to throw the tube and hose onto the floor or lean it against something you can just pop it into the bottom there like that go and do whatever you had to do whether it's uh, take something out of the oven answer the door have a coughing fit there we go see that better and then of course you can resume your cleaning just by lifting off and then going like that along the carpet or floor now let's have a look at the controls not a lot to see really here it is exactly as illustrated on the box you've got two speeds with this the red switch is obviously your on off and the green is your low and high button so twin speed low for if you're cleaning your curtains or more delicate items high basically for everything else carpets and hard floors now let's have a look it's eight kilograms in weight it is a 620 now I don't know if you can see that try and hold it so it's in focus it's a 620 watt motor which compares to 1200 watts of the old Henry and Hetty machines I believe the one that came before this was 580 watts so they've upped the wattage slightly on this machine and of course giving it two speeds so that that is different so the machine as I said I'm talking about the HVR 212 you need to check which model so you might find an older model in your stores this as far as I know is the latest model it's the one that you probably will get if you buy from a retailer with a with a high turnover of stock right I've uh, got Henry on the floor again so we've looked at the controls now you get another very very good feature of this machine is its extremely long 10 meter cable now obviously pneumatic make machines for the commercial market they have to clean large areas like shops which obviously have a much wider area to clean than your average home so to have a long cable is an advantage in a commercial setting but believe you me it's also an advantage in a domestic setting there's nothing more infuriating than having to change sockets in every room and there's some vacuum cleaners that I've used that the, whole, the cord is so short that every room I'm having to find a socket in each room I can't even clean two rooms with some of the vacuums I've tested so the best scenario for me is a vacuum cleaner that can clean a whole floor of your house without having to move the plug to another socket so to be able to clean say downstairs your kitchen your dining room living room your hallway if you can clean all that without unplugging that's a boon but in some homes you may be able to clean some of upstairs as well if you have a central power point because it's such a long cable and that's another huge plus point with Henry's apart from they're robust they're reliable they're quiet the extra long cable is a boon it really is and you'll know that if you if you're fed up of unplugging and plugging in 
course we have cordless machines coming onto the market which do away with the cord but so far at the time of making this video there's some good machines out there but none match the performance of a mains powered vacuum none that I've tested anyway <clears throat> obviously you've got the plug and you need to remove that little protector of course don't try and shove that in the in your socket without taking that think why is that not going in well if it's not going into your socket it means you've left that on so take that off so to wind up the flex again there's no push button but it is a pretty quick thing to do and I should have really untangled it before I did this but <clears throat> Obviously, when I've used it, the flex won't all be bundled up together. It is a lot easier than this. Hang on, have I, have I tangled it up? Right, there we are. There we are. So, all that long 10 metre cable is stored inside Henry's hat. As you can see, Henry is quite manoeuvrable two large wheels at the back, two swivel casters at the front. Is there anything underneath that we need to look at? No. Pretty tough. You can hear that sound. You're a tough old boy aren't you Henry? Yes I am. You didn't have that voice at the start of the video. Oh no I was right northern weren't I? Yes you were Henry. Have you got a split personality? I'll have to watch you, won't I, hey? Right, here's the exhaust vent, where, of course, the warm air will exhaust out of the cleaner. I think that's everything to show you on the outside. This is a rubberized bumper to help protect your furniture, although that does, some people have complained that Henry gets caught on door frames and furniture and falls over. So, you know, I'm giving you the positives and the negatives of this cleaner. A lot of people love Henry. A lot of people love you, don't they, Henry? Let's pop, let's pop your hose on, because we want to see, to see that you've got your nice long nose to gobble up the dirt. There we go. I mean, it's an iconic, isn't it? It's an iconic vacuum, the Henry. Still made in Britain, made in charred in Somerset. That was, I was trying to do a Somerset accent with a cold. I can't do one without a cold, so never mind. Right, to access Henry's bag, you need to pull, whoops, pull these two bits out. And then, of course, didn't show you this, is Henry's built-in carry handle. There we go. This folds down when not in use and just lifts. And then you can lift Henry's hat off, his power unit, his motor unit. And underneath, Again, it looks slightly different. You'd have to check back on my Hetty video to see what the difference is, but to my untrained eye, there is a difference here. The motor will have been changed. I'm sure Pneumatic will have made improvements to the motor to give it the suction it needs on a lower wattage, but that seems different. But anyway, there's the, the motor where all the suck comes from it is located inside there. Pop that down there for now. I'll just take the hose off actually because it's getting in the way at the moment for the purpose of the demonstration or the introduction, the demo will be following. Here's a standard pneumatic filter. If you go for the Henry Micro, it does come with a, a better grade filter which would improve, I assume, the emissions rating from a C to I'm not sure. I'd have to check that. So if you suffer from allergies, go for the Henry Micro. Well, another coughing fit has enabled me to change the view. So I've never coughed so much. Just as soon as the camera goes on, I start coughing. I've been fine up until now. Here is Henry's bag fitted. So yes, as I suspected, there is a bag fitted and three spare bags. It's all very, very basic. But, you know, I think pneumatic think if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, they haven't. So this is the inside of the bin. It is possible to use Henry without a bag and in, in commercial environments where I've seen Henry's being used and had a look at them. Often they are used without a dust bag. 
so they just put the filter on and all the dirt goes in the bin. Now it is possible to do that but I would suggest in a domestic environment you don't want to be doing that. And like I said earlier, the bags are so so cheap, why on earth would you not put a bag in it? It makes the disposal much much cleaner um, and also improves the filtration. Now that, it says on it, do not wash. You can't wash this, unfortunately. When I've owned this type of cleaner in the past, because I've got another vacuum cleaner, well, a few anyway, I've always been able to clean this filter using the suction from another vacuum. So if you don't have, if Henry's your only vacuum, I think the only option is take it outside and give it a damn good thrashing as Basil Fawlty thrashed his little car in Fawlty Towers, but I don't suggest getting a branch from a tree to do it, just sort of as if you've got a tambourine, or just, you know, obviously it might make some dust go up in the air, so do it outside, give it a good shake, or a brush with a soft brush to keep that clean. So, to fit the bag, and the bag has a nice I don't know, latex type or rubbery type collar that helps provide the seal. It's also got this flap, so when you do take it out, you can hold the flap over the hole. This obviously will be full of muck. Take it out to your dustbin, drop it in your bin, and then fit a new bag. And the way you fit a new bag. Now, it is in that, now, I don't know if it matters which way you do it, but when I opened it, obviously the text was uppermost, so perhaps that's the way it goes in. So text to the top and just locate the green collar onto the black bag support tube. So you can push it in like that. Push it in all the way. There is a little lip actually. A little lip here. So you want to make sure it's pushed right beyond that lip. You don't want to leave it like that. That's not fitted properly. You want it pushed right home like that. And just you know, spread the bag out like that. And you don't, you don't, obviously you don't want to be in a situation where you've got any of the bag trapped like that in the filter. You want to make sure that the bag is sitting nice and comfortably in the bottom, so it's not in the way of the filter. Then you pop the filter back on. And then Henry, now it doesn't matter at all which way you put Henry's hat on, you can put it any way you want. Now, if you're a bit OCD, you might not like this, but you can put Henry's hat on this way. So here's Henry. Now, Henry will work perfectly well with his hat on back to front. You might prefer, you might prefer to, to have Henry in this position. I don't know. I couldn't do it. I <laughs> it's just wrong. It's completely wrong to me. But look, it's still okay. It does mean, of course, you maybe you've got easier access to the buttons at the front. It doesn't matter at all if you have it, but of course the flex does come out at this side, so maybe it is better to have it the correct way, the way it was intended, as nature intended, which is that way. Oh, that looks better. Oh, I bet some of you were thinking, no, put it back. Of course, Henry could go this way if you want to be a bit lopsided. You could, you could have him like that. And I have, again, in commercial settings, when the people just don't care, they just emptied it, they just pop their hat on and because they need to get on with their jobs, don't they? I have seen, I have seen Henry's use like this. With Henry off centre, oh no! But don't worry, don't worry folks. Let's get him straight, there we go. Let's get you how you should be, Henry. There you go. I think, I think that's how you should be. Of course, then we need to just push in the two clips. Make sure that you've got those secure before you lift him. I'm saying it's an it. Oh, I know. It's because pneumatic have called him Henry and given him an eyes, an eyes and a mouth and a, an opening here that you call him a he. I mean, not many people give a gender to their washing machines, do they? Well, some of you might do. But I, I certainly don't. I'm not, you know, none of my vacuum cleaners I consider as a male or female, apart from, of course, Henry or Hetty. Or if I've got any of the other pneumatic machines that have a name, then of course, again, they would be male or female. 
But he's, he is a, a smiley little thing, isn't he? Right then, before I go, I'll just switch him on. Let's see how powerful he feels at the hose end. See how quiet he is. And then, following on my channel in a two or three weeks, will be a full demonstration and review. We'll see how this fares compared to the other pneumatic cleaners I've used. So let's pull out the cord. All the way, I think. In fact, I'll just make sure it's on low setting first before I switch on. And plug it in behind me. Okay then. I'm not, I'm not thinking you're going to be very noisy, Henry, because no Henry I've owned has been very noisy. So we're going to start off on low power. Bear in mind, this is uh, 620 watts, so if it's sort of half that, you're talking about 310 watts. So anyway, let's see. Now that's at 310 watts. Now that, that power, well I'm assuming it's 310, it might not be quite half, but it's on low speed. That power would be fine for most, you, most of above floor jobs, doing your upholstery, your curtains, your dusting jobs. It probably wouldn't be fine for your carpets. But let's see what it sounds like and feel the suction when it's on high speed. Now, without having a regular 1200 watt machine to compare this to, because Hetty, she went to another owner. She, she didn't like it here. She was being bullied by some of the German vacuum cleaners I have. So I sent her away for her own good. She's, she's, she's on a farm. She's enjoying it, you know. Um, yes, without having a 1200 watt machine to do a direct suction comparison, I can't say, but to me, remembering the suction of Hetty, it does seem slightly less, but not dramatically less, considering it's about half the wattage of the Hetty. It isn't, certainly isn't half the suction. That is for sure. Okay, before I go, I'll just pass the nozzle over the carpet on high speed, just to judge how easy it is to push but it won't be a full demo. I will be getting out my bag of filth and doing a proper demo, don't you worry. But just before I go, I'll just give it a quick running over the carpet. Okay then, let's take the floor nozzle out of the parking slot. I've attached, obviously, the extension ones and the curved end to the end of the hose. So I'm all ready to go. The suction valve is closed. So we're going to use it on full power, which is what you would need for carpets. Unless you've got some very lightweight rugs where low power may be beneficial, but this is just a regular short pile carpet. So I'm going to use it on high. It is so very, very quiet. Now, as you've noticed from the video, I do have quite a heavy cold, so my hearing may be slightly impaired, as often it is when you have a heavy cold, but that is whisper, whisper quiet. And the one thing that surprised me, now the head was pretty easy to push, but I could see it lifting up the carpet. I'm not sure, I'll do a quick close-up just to see, uh, just to see if I can show you what I mean but it was actually lifting the pile, but it wasn't really difficult to push. So it felt like it was doing a good job. Right, I'll just do a close-up of the cleaning head and I'll just try and show you what I mean. Right, I've got the camera on the floor. Obviously the machine's not on. We'll just see if we can pick up, we'll be able to see what I mean by the fact it's actually powerful enough to lift the carpet up. 
but not too powerful that it's really hard to push. I had the Hoover Pure Power Greenway Cylinder which was a, a lower energy vacuum and it was unbelievably difficult to push. But this one is very easy. Let's have a go. So I think you could see from that shot how it was actually lifting up the carpet. Now I'm assuming it means it's going to clean a bit deeper because if it's lifting the carpet up, providing you haven't got a stuck down carpet, providing it's a fitted carpet, like most homes in the UK, carpets are fitted around the edge with gripper rods. They're not actually stuck down. Some contract and commercial carpeting is stuck down, but most carpets are fitted with gripper rods. So it is actually lifting. So what it means, by lifting the pile, it's introducing airflow. So air can flow from the backing of the carpet right up to the nozzle. So I may be wrong, but I'm assuming because it's allowing this airflow, it will be cleaning more dirt. Because you can have a really powerful suction on a vacuum. If it's too powerful, it's going to stick itself to the carpet and you're not going to get the air flowing. You're going to get the suction but not the airflow. You need the air to flow in order to carry the dirt from your carpet up the tube and into the bag or the bagless container, whatever machine you've got. So I really like that. I would prefer, I think, I do wish I'd got the um, one of the John Lewis, the John or the Lewis, because I think having a metal base plate on this if I can get a hold of a metal base plate one, I'd like to try that out, comparing it. Because it does feel slightly as if it's very slight, as if it's a bit scraping along the carpet. And it's odd, I can't describe it, but I do feel that nice polished sole plate would make the whole thing seem a lot easier. But on the whole, first impressions of this new nozzle, it is a great improvement on the nozzle that came before. Well, that concludes my unboxing and first look at the Henry Vacuum Cleaner HVR200. Please stay tuned to this channel because, of course, I will be doing a proper review and demonstration of this machine in a few weeks' time. Don't forget to check my back catalogue. I've tested an awful lot of vacuum cleaners over the past few years, from the very cheap to the quite expensive. So there's videos for Dyson, Miele, Sebo, Hoover some old Electroluxes, so modern and vintage machines I've had a look at, well fairly vintage anyway for me, not as vintage as some machines but anyway. So check back at my channel, enjoy looking at my back catalogue and if you'd like to be updated as soon as I upload a new video please subscribe and you'll get a little message in your email to tell you that I've uploaded something new for you to watch. So until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.